A warm welcome from Augsburg. Unfortunately, we cannot meet in person today for obvious reasons. But we still have a huge stage here and we will use that stage to show our view of the market and technology for autonomous transport systems. For those of you who follow us, who follow KUKA directly um, or on social media, those of you might know that we sharpened our vision for 2030. Our mission to 2030 is to make automation and robotics easily available to everybody. And this is true, of course, also for mobile robots. What we think is that the integration, the operation, and the flexible readaption of autonomous transport systems needs to be way easier th than it is today. And we are convinced that high-level language software and AI are the key to that. So our original plan was to talk about the requirements of modern production concepts for autonomous transport systems and how we address those requirements with high-level language software and AI. And we will do that, but not only that. In the last few years, we were observing developments on the market that are pretty interesting, that are pretty exciting for us as a supplier of products and solutions for automated systems. And we are going to share that with you. I'm Michael Jürgens. I'm responsible for the AMR solutions unit with KUKA. So I'm responsible for the integration and solution business related to autonomous transport systems. Of course, I'm not doing this alone here. I have got excellent support. This is Markus Steppberger. He's our software team lead. He's responsible for our software development within our department. Markus, before we really jump in, tell us how did you get into high-level language software, AI, and what's KUKA, uh, what's, what's Augsburg got to do with it? Yeah, first of all, a warm welcome from me also. Um, yeah, well, I think the passion for software development um, started back in my school days already, and um, it further developed during my studies in, at the Technical University of Munich, and it was also at uh, TUM when I heard my first um, lectures on AI, and I immediately knew that uh, AI will be a topic for me. Um, I was born in Augsburg, I grew up in Augsburg, and of course, if you grow up in Augsburg, you know KUKA, and uh, yeah, I visited KUKA for the first time in 1998, I guess, as part of a school trip. And um, it might sound a bit cheesy, but uh, from that point on, I wanted to join KUKA at some day. And uh, so I got the opportunity after my graduation to join KUKA as a, as a software developer in, in AI. And yeah, I'm developing software, AI software ever since. And I'm really proud to do that and have such great technology in Augsburg and uh, give it the label AI made in Augsburg. That's indeed a bit cheesy, but obviously you know what you're talking about. So tell us why is high-level language software and AI becoming more and more important for modern production concepts? Nowadays, um, autonomous transport systems are becoming increasingly large and more complex, and that's partly because um, of the degree of integration with the customer's production equipment. So the stability and the output um, of the production often depends on AGV systems. And therefore, AGV systems um, are a part of the value chain. Mm -hmm. And um, of course, if the complexity of the whole system increases, there is a high risk uh, of, of failure and, and reduced output. And in order to manage that risk, we need powerful software. Mm. And this is important to know in order to assess the market development. One important market dimension is the participant size. Um, our point, from our point of view, the market right now is dominated by SMEs, small and medium enterprises, with, a, with an annual revenue of 10 to 60 million. And what we are observing is that given a difficult order intake situation and, and projects that are, that are becoming bigger and bigger and more complex, the liquidity pressure on those SMEs is increasing. Talking about um, the big projects, um, imagine there's project delays, right? Usually project delays are directly related to delayed payments. And bigger companies, they can compensate for delayed um, payments through other business. And SMEs are struggling with that. So from our point of view, this liquidity pressure on the SMEs is directly leading to a consolidation pressure on the market. But Marcus, let's get back to the importance of software, 
on modern production concepts, on, on the market development. How does this increase in importance of, of software um, impact the market structure? I think um, we will see a specialization of, of uh, suppliers for autonomous uh, material transporting technologies. And um, if these overall systems are getting more complex and, and much bigger, as you mentioned, um, we will see that suppliers will share their added value. And um, we already see that. Um, we see that there are more and more suppliers specializing on either hardware, on the one hand, so AGVs, and um, specializing on high-level language software development on the other hand. Mm. And I think that this is a clear paradigm shift. Mm. And those SMEs that I was referring to, they shy away from capital, um, from those capital intense invests in software development and new players emerge on the market. Um, startups, spin-offs of bigger companies like automotive OEMs, and they, they have both. They have experience in material flow design and they have the necessary funding. Uh, we were recently talking about standardization initiatives. Um, standardization of, in, of, of probably the most important interface in an autonomous transport system, the interface between uh, the top level software layer and the bottom layer, which is um, the mobile robots themselves and the AGVs on the shop floor. Um, and there, those initiatives are driven by associations. In Germany, um, VDA, VDMA, um, to yeah, well, well, standardize those interfaces and make it uh, easily adaptable to those players on the market. Marcus, what do you think those, uh, those standardization initiatives, um, what impact do they have on those startups and, and spin-offs emerging on the market? So if we are talking about standards like the VDA, um, VDMA 5050, so an interface, a standardized interface between the AGV on, on the one side and the control software on the other side, um, I think these developments will, will accelerate the development I already talked about. And um, of course, if you have such standards, you can use AGVs from different manufacturers um, with one software uh, tool. And I think that at the end, everyone benefits from that. Um, when creating a solution, you can access a, a much larger selection of AGVs. Um, and, of course, the AGV manufacturers, and especially small ones, um, can access the market much faster and much easier because um, they don't have to deal with software development on their own. Mm -hmm. To sum up our market view real quick, the special specialization that you're referring to and the consolidation I was talking about before are clearly supporting the separation uh, into a product business on the one side and a solution business on the other side, which is clearly supported, accelerated through standardization initiatives. Marcus, you are a software developer. Your time is expensive, so let's get to the point. You are stating, you are claiming that high-level language software and AI are the enabler for modern production concepts. And you are justifying that statement by saying we, we need those elements to manage complexity. I get that but uh, that's not enough for me. Uh, you can expect more from me. Tell us, why do we need high-level language software and AI to jump onto the next S-curve in the technology development? What I'm saying is, uh, why do we need those components to reach the next order of magnitude in uh, material flow performance? We see that uh, manufacturers today are facing um, greater fluctuations in demand and product life cycles are getting shorter and shorter. And you can deal with that with a fully flexible production. And as I already stated, the material flow, flow is an integral part of, of the production nowadays. And so it has to meet the same requirements. It has to be fully flexible. Um, and our solution for that is an event-based transport assignment to AGVs. These events, um, yeah, they have to be derived from, from data. And we have to collect data from a lot of subsystems. And if we look at um, production plants nowadays, we see a very heterogeneous landscape of systems, and all of these subsystems are more or less IT systems. And in order to um, connect IT systems and get the data out of it, you need software, high-level software, high-level language software. But of course, that's not enough. You need flexibility. So you have to do something with the data. You have to react on the current state of the plant. And um, we find the best solution for that is, is using methods from AI. 
Mm -hmm. In preparation of that keynote, I was uh, browsing on the internet for AI quotes, and I couldn't pass by Elon Musk here. He is stating, with AI, we're summoning the devil, Marcus. Who is that devil? Do we need to be afraid of him? And what has KUKA to do with him? Yeah, I think, of course, if you, if you deal with um, new technology, you have always to do it with care. And, but, of course, our systems are, are secure. We do not use um, the methods um, Alan is talking about. Um, we use more traditional AI algorithms, um, mainly from the, from the field of, of AI planning, optimizing, scheduling, and stuff like that. And these algorithms do what we tell them to do. Um, and in general, I really do not think that the devil is, uh, the devil is interested in intralogistics at all. Okay. Let's get back to our numbers here. Um, in the course of the pandemic, um, leaders in politics, industry, and also within the society, it's being discussed how we can take away the risk from global value chains to bring the value added, the production, closer to the end customer. Industry leaders say we do need at least 20% just to keep production in high-wage countries like Germany, not talking about reshoring. Marcus, how can you live up to your social responsibility? Do you think reshoring is an appealing option? And what I'm asking is, can we achieve those efficiency gains, those 20%? Well, I don't think that I can um, single-handedly bring back um, <laughs> the production to high-wage countries, but uh, I think that the vision is clear. Um, we try to improve efficiency, and we do that with Ivy, and we think that is the right approach to use AI software. And with AI software, we are able to save space, save cost, hardware cost, for example, and um, make the production much more robust. And how do we do that? How do we achieve those savings? If we, if we look at traditional AGV systems, we can compare them to, to tram lines, for example. Mm -hmm. um, they have very fixed routes, everything is pre-programmed, and if one AGV stops, everything stops, um, because you cannot pass another tram, and um, eventually, in the worst case, your production will stop. So there's no flexibility at all. We see ourselves more like the Uber of intralogistics. Um, we have a system that reacts to the current state of the plant, and we assign transports and um, routes flexibly to the AGVs. So if an AGV stops somewhere or there is a blocked route, then our system will replan the routes and the production will, will go on. Mm -hmm. So therefore, we, we have a very robust um, um, production and material flow um, with much less AGVs because uh, we maximize their utilization. We are discussing optimization of subsystems here. Do you think we can achieve more? We can increase those, even increase, increase those efficiency gains if we think bigger, if we think material flow across lines, across halls, across customer sites? Yeah, I think um, to think bigger, we have to look a little bit into the future. Um, but I think it's very plausible that not only individual plants um, can be controlled and optimized by an AI software like Ivy. Um, I think that logistic solutions will not end at the factory gate in, in the future. Um, if you look at um, autonomous trucks, for example, they are more or less AGVs. And I think that AI software like Ivy uh, can be as useful on the whole supply chain and, and even on highways as it is right now in individual plants. We are not there yet. There was a lot of future in your explanations. And we're talking about scenarios here, market mm -hmm. scenarios, from a technological point of view and from an economical point of view. Openly speaking, how far have we come with regard to fully flexible production, fully flexible autonomous transport? What can our customers expect from us today? I think AI-based software um, for a fully flexible material flow is not a vision anymore. Um, we develop that. We call it Ivy. And Ivy already runs um, at different customer sites, and, and it performs very well. So we are developing it further and further to make um, the future I described real someday. Mm. 
software is one part of an autonomous transport system. And then there is, I was mentioning that before, um, the robots on the shop floor. Um, those are all elements of an autonomous transport system. But what the customer is interested in is not elements, not components. He's interested in a solution. And with regard to material flow, the, the problem he has, the problem he wants to, uh, to be solved eventually is to get the right material to the right spot at the right time. Marcus, what is necessary to put all those components together to provide a solution to the customer? Yeah, as you stated, there is a gap between the market and, and the solution. And that gap um, comes from many interfaces to the environment, um, mainly hardware interfaces and software interfaces. And we call that the application layer. And the design of that application layer um, determines the success or, or the failure of, of an AGV project. So what you need is experience with the customer's um, automated processes, as well as how to derive the right requirements for your project. And um, yeah, that's, that's the main knowledge you, you have to bring into such projects. Mm -hmm. Let's remember that specialization that we were talking about. The problem that arises here is if those market participants tend to specialize on components, they tend not to be willing to take the full risk for, for a solution, if they, they do not have full control of the system, if they can only control parts of it, only components of it. Mark is, for quite some time now, we were striving for a neutrality here, but the stage is sending a clear message to us. What makes KUKA so special? How can we jump in here? Yeah, one thing is, is very clear. We deliver everything from a single source. We have the hardware, as you already mentioned. We have um, the AI-based software with Ivy. And we have the experience and the knowledge to do the integration at the end. Mm -hmm. And we do that by putting the customer's needs first, of course. Um, that means we advise the customer completely neutrally on, on the product, sele product selection um, in order to, to achieve the best solution um, for our customers. Mm -hmm. and the best solution, of course, ensures one thing, and you already stated that um, the right material has to be uh, in the right spot at the right time. Mm. Okay, sounds good. So we all believe you. Tell us, what were your most exciting uh, projects that you were involved in, and what was KUKA's scope in it? We implemented um, a lot of different solutions um, worldwide with our software. Um, but I think the most exciting one for me, and I think for my team, was um, the first project we did. It was a, a buffer storage um, for an uh, automotive OEM here in, in Europe. And um, at the end of the project, we went there with our whole team to see our software in action. And I think we were all very excited and very proud at the end um, how our software performed. And it, yeah, it made one thing very clear that we are on the right track. And mm -hmm. yeah, that was, that was great. It's not a secret we are working closely with our automotive customers. It's not a secret neither that we are working to diversify here. Can you, um, can you tell us about a project which is not related to the automotive industry? Of course. For example, last year we did a project um, for the electronics industry mm -hmm. in Taiwan. And um, we did it with the same software. So our software is flexible enough, um, especially because we use AI, that mm -hmm. um, we don't really care um, what we are carrying on, on the AGVs. If it's uh, a silicon wafer or parts of a car, we don't care. We mm. are flexible enough. Marcus, it's been a pleasure, as always, but we have run out of time. Any last thoughts you want to share? You want to say hello to your parents? Yeah, of course. <laughs> I could uh, close with uh, thanking my parents to let me grow up in, in Augsburg and letting me to know KUKA very early, but... All kidding aside, I'm very proud that um, we have such a great technology here in Augsburg and um, we are working on, on such great things and we have AI made in Augsburg. And yeah, I thank you all and um, I'm looking forward to new contacts and hopefully a lot of questions. Nicely said. I also enjoyed it a lot, sharing the stage with you, but also sharing our ideas, our vision uh, that drives us with you. You always have the opportunity to get back to us anytime to start a discussion and on how we can support you. We are looking forward to it. All the best, stay healthy and see you soon.
industrial intelligence.